so what I'm gonna try to show you here is uh, how machine learning and specifically how Copycat can help us to quickly uh, compose some shots, specifically do some effect. So sometimes in the prep stage before we applying the effect itself. Uh, so like some, uh, some technical work between A to B uh, or even like creative effects. But what, what is happening here with Copcat and machine learning itself uh, and 2D world or images. Uh, how we composite or deal with pixels with image. So uh, what happened here is we can specifically train uh, copycat models to attack specific tasks that we are we have on some shots. Because even we sometimes we have these effects, uh, they are pre-built to do something, and then we somehow have to be creative in how to use those effects because. Uh, shots change because every time a uh, client has some decisions and uh, uh, and uh, we, we are dealing with a bunch of variations so uh, it's hard to predict how the shots are going to be so uh, having pre-trained models it works perfectly as well but sometimes you you really need specific uh, uh, training and this is where copycat gets very useful because we have this particular shot or particular effect or even this particular task that uh, sometimes pre-built uh, effects doesn't work because maybe the lighting on that on that or even that specific movement on that particular shot it doesn't work any plugging but then we have to be creative and machine learning uh, and copcat can help us to train specifically to that task uh, so that's what I'm gonna try to show you to show you here right now. So here I have this shot, uh, and this is a shot that I worked a few years ago. And uh, uh, what was special about this shot? It's uh, how many layers of photos we have to comp on these shots. And what is happening is every time we move, let me play the shot. Every time we move, you see like variations of lighting, variation of shadows. Uh, even here, you have variations of you know the perspective of the tracking uh, markers. So all these red red uh, tracking markers we need to remove in order to compose these pictures on top. And there is a bunch of ways to approach this shot. Uh, one of them is trying to clean this this tracker markers and uh very in a very realistic way so we can keep all the lighting like if you if you see in here we have this big lighting happening there but not here so if you can clean this up and like even in this in the shade and just have a clean plate of this without tracker markers we can use these lighting variations to compose on top of the pictures and uh, this is exactly what's happening in this shot so in order to make this shot realistic we need to make sure uh, that we have the lighting and uh, in some frames here for instance if you see here you have the shadow of the of the finger but you have this uh this strong me to highlight effect happening so these variations is it's great because when you put this on top of our digital photos we have this uh, uh we make more realistic because of this uh particularly you know real war effects so uh we we could before machine learning and copcat we could easily you know go in here and go uh tracking markers by tracking markers and then what we can do is place that and manually removing one by one and then remove this manually so as you can see here now i'm going to apply traditional 2d effects and I, what i'm going to do is trying to patch uh the surround area and then quickly removing 
the original Kraken markers and we can, we usually do in this way and then we we we're trying to get the best pixels surrounding and then in the combination of all of those tracker markers uh we have a, a, a pretty nice clean plate with all the effects of the real light uh environment but what's happening here as you can easily see this will take uh, a bit of time and i remember doing this shot years ago and this took me uh a good solid days because you know I want I was looking to have all this uh, this this tracker markers removed. So uh, what all these techniques of machine learning is allowing us is is to doing this same task very fast, and we we do have like approaches like uh, imaging painting or even uh, approaches with GAMS to trying to patch this with a mask and then get its surroundings and then clean. But even sometimes if you have a good pre-trained model, that is uh, that can work really nicely, but we still sometimes want to perform specific to a sequence or a shot or a, a specific frames. It, this is where Copycat uh, 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 getting uh, very useful. Uh, so in thinking the same way of having a data set, uh, like we, I could easily take this shot here, we can, and then crop all the, the all the tracker markers, and then clean a few frames, and then train a model. So that is usually what what we try to do with machine learning. So we have our uh, our original shot and then we can have a ground truth and then we hopefully when this is very well training the model will be learn how to you know reproduce these results and this was manually uh, clean but what's happening with this approach which is also is amazing is we as a compositor we will have more tasks to do for instance uh, we will need to you know cropping all the images and then try to to maybe align each one and then have uh, all the best uh, variations and so on. And when with Copcat, we even don't need to do that specifically by cropping and prepping. We can jump uh, that stage and, and, and perform what I did here, just a few frames. So what I did, I choose five frames between this shot is 52 frames long so i choose five frames where i get the most variation as possible and then you can see those frames here and what i did i take the original and then i clean this frame and then i take the second frame and then i clean as well the third one and then i clean so i did that for five frames and then now I have uh, a data set for Copycat. And what is uh, the beauty of this uh, is that I don't even need to crop and prep and align because uh, I, can, I can train in kind of a difference mode. So I'm going to put the shot as it is and then just train with these frames. And then when I apply uh, uh, the model that, that was trained, I'm going to just... Yeah, apply on the shot without worry about cropping and without worry about coding or prepping and that it's really really helpful so here as you can see uh i have my model and then i'm using two two rtx 8000s and then i'm using that to train the model on those five frames and I did, a, I did that a few times, as you can see here. And then, and that is also great because we can start to training and then you can stop the training and then I can just inference that, see the results and continue working. And that is exactly what's happening right here now. Uh, so I trained the model, I got, I training and stopped training around 10 to 20 K uh and then i figure out the best result was uh was this one so i was quickly just stopping testing continuing training i got my model 
uh, and then I'm just in France right now and this is real time <laughs> uh, that for me it's uh, the best so you see that the model this is running the model also uh, and with the same uh, RTX 8000s and then the, when I just hit play the model start to just cleaning almost in real time so this is running kind of live right now and uh yeah this is working uh and and what is great for me is that i just uh fed the model with five frames and then now it's it's applying and pretty much done <laughs> i remember having this uh spending days on this approach here in order to get but now I'm, I'm just training. And what is great about this is it's I can we can doing uh, we can do other tasks uh, while the machine is training. So we can put this for training in another machine or, or overnight, and then we can have kind of this as a AI machine learning assistant. And this is exactly what's happening here now. And then uh, you see that is 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 removing and keeping the surroundings. Uh, another thing that I really like of this approach, it's the ability of have more. Uh, uh, we train the model, and if the model is very well trained with a good data set, and remember this was just five frames, so this could be even better if if I have uh, more frames. Uh, to the model for training but with those five frames imagine that uh, uh, we have this shot and I'm gonna apply some augmentation on it so some transforms uh, and so here I'm applying some rotation some scale is some rotation so this for the model it should be a completely new frame and then uh, what's happening is when I apply the model here now let's apply the same model it's just <laughs> it's just supply again uh, let's put another frame and then you see that it's all clean uh, let me remove see there and let me apply the grain so finish this comp and let, let me compare to the original one which is before the transformation and then after you see what's happening it's really removing or if you want to really really compare so I can apply the same argumentation to the original one and then you can compare like that and you see this is a completely new frame new sh uh, you can even say new shot and then uh, when we compare very closely to that and the original one it, it's very much clean and this this would this in the past took me a long time to do it and uh yeah this is this this is really really great to have in comps right now uh, especially for uh, for prepping stages like this one uh, uh and really really helpful especially if you have a good hardware for training and and speed up the process uh, let's remove this transformation and now let's let's do this even harder imagine it uh we do have ai uh, machine learning models to do retiming we we saw in the past like nvidia doing these amazing approaches to do retiming so imagine if you retime this shot so we're gonna create frames that we never saw before uh and this is uh so when i apply a retime here I essentially creating completely new frames because this is this is low down uh, uh, for different speed as you can see so go faster go slow so for instance uh, if I put some keyframes here let's actually let's actually create this right now so let's kill keyframes and I'm gonna create some handling so here here I'm gonna slow down so here I'm going to speed up again let's speed up more so and here i'm going to slow down this again so you see that it's because this is based on uh, an optical flow uh, a traditional method of applying uh, 
and create completely new frames sometimes this does create uh, some artifacts so what's happening here in this between frames is the uh, you're trying to you're creating a completely new frames that was never planning to to have it and so if i if i wanted to do this manually i would have to just redo it a shot again because all my my manual masks like i had here and all my you know scales everything would be completely different imagine it imagine by doing this this uh this this slowdown or this time warp it's we are just completely having a new shot and when we try to apply uh the model it's just remove it. it this is a completely new frame when i pass you see it there you can see by by having these uh artifacts you we know for sure this is a very new frame and you see the mod is trying to remove even like with even with the artifacts you see there this artifacts happening there it's it's actually removing as well because you know the model was trained to to remove this type of uh of of pixels so why not the artifact and actually working uh so when i apply the grain the just matching the grain from the original we almost have the we pretty much have a clean which for me this is really amazing amazing especially for artists perspective that we can you know you see what i just did here even let's push even more and create like argumentation the shot and you see it's just do it again and if i want to render this in real time applying the the retiming and then having the whole thing it's just doing it so this is really really powerful in it in creating a completely new way of approaching the shots because it gives us the ability to work uh, to train a model specific to the frames that we need to be working or uh, sometimes you're dealing with shots that we need to be very very uh, uh, be careful about it so having a model that we can train on on our own uh, and this is really on and very specific to those frames this changes uh, the workflow completely and that is where copycat came because this is really great and for sure not only for this but uh, other tasks where we be able to apply effects like that so yeah so also another thing that we could do ima uh, is imagine that this shot this is a 3k shot so depending of the hardware and computer that you have this can be very uh very difficult to 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 work it on because it's very heavy especially if you have to do not only this but you have to do the whole comb and that can be very heavy so a good way to, to approach this with, like with copcat it's training is specific to this shot or even to the whole sequence but training to to upscale those pixels so what you can easily do here for instance is i have this a native 3k resolution and then what i can do is resize this for full 8d so let's resize this like a uh, half percent so let's say i want to this in half so now this is half resolution that we had before you see that you are losing a lot of definition because you are now half of the percent here like uh, it's not even 1080p anymore so this allows to be a very very applying effects really really fast so what we can do here now is adding a code code cap and it makes sure that my ground truth is going to be the original one and my input is going to be my resize one and now what it what i can easily do it's it's training so copcat is going to be training with ground truth the original one and when we zoom like that let's see those record marks that has resolution and this one which lost a lot of rest and then now i can just put for training quickly and since i have two rtx 8000 here i can just push this to be to looking for details and uh let's clump this since we have 50 
to let's add off so bed size of 25 and then i'm training a model to just uh to understand the difference of the resize specific to that shot and then i if this is well trained as you can see here now it's trying to you know understand the differences as you can see there and then once this is well trained we'll be able to just resize the end so we can comp we can do all the, all our effects and the very not very small but it's a small resolution and then quickly compose the shot and then apply to upres again and make the shot even faster so, so that's it hope you have enjoyed and thanks foundry and thanks uh, everyone thank you bye